Welcome back to the channel. I'm RJ Ron Kilio. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. I recently acquired a glorious relic from the past. And if you were alive and playing guitar in the 80s, you probably heard of it. Maybe you even owned one. It's the Rockman Headphone Guitar Amp. Now, if you're not familiar with it, it's one of the first headphone amps with multiple onboard stereo sounds and probably the first product with amp-like modeling technology. And we're talking about analog, by the way, not digital. Originally, it came out in the early 80s. It was invented by engineer and guitarist of Boston, Tom Schultz. So essentially, the sound of the Rockman is the sound of Tom Schultz. It's the sound of those classic Boston guitar riffs, kind of that nasally, chorusy overdrive. But the Rockman was also used on other records as well, most notably Def Leppard's 1987 blockbuster album, Hysteria. And I mean, pretty much all of the guitars were recorded with this thing. Which is crazy because you think of Hysteria as being this huge sounding record produced, some might say overproduced, by one of the biggest producers of all time, Mutt Lang. Hugely successful album. And all the guitars were recorded using this plastic headphone amp direct into the mixing board. No huge Marshall stacks being mic'd, no big Bradshaw refrigerator racks, just this thing. Plastic box with a belt clip. So I'm totally stoked to plug this in and check out these sounds. I've never owned one, nor have I played through one. And I'm curious to see if this really does nail those hysteria album tones. Now, quick history on the Rockman stuff. Before he was a rock star in the band Boston, Tom Schultz got his bachelor's and master's in mechanical engineering from MIT. Most of the gear he used on the first Boston album was gear he actually developed himself, which eventually became the designs for the Rockman products. He started his own company, Schultz Research and Development Inc., also known as SR&D for short, in 1980. The first product released was actually not the Rockman. It was an amp attenuator called the Power Soak. The original Rockman came out in 1982, appropriately named because of Sony's Walkman cassette player gaining popularity at the time. And since then, the Rockman has gone through multiple iterations. There's the Rockman Ultralight, which came after, the X100, which is what I have here, the Soloist, Bass Rockman, Guitar Ace, Metal Ace, they also made half-space rack effects called rock modules, MIDI controllers, preamps, amplifiers. The Rockman line, which used analog circuits, became less successful during the digital effects boom of the early 90s, essentially putting the company out of business. And in 1995, he sold the Rockman name to Dunlop, and they still make the Guitar Ace, Metal Ace, and Bass Ace headphone amps. Now, as far as Def Leppard's use of the Rockman on the Hysteria record, guitarist Phil Collins stated in a Guitar World interview, the reason for that was there were so many layers of tracks, and the sound was so huge that if you had a massive Marshall sound, it wouldn't have fit sonically. It should also be noted that they also used an identical unit called the Rockbox, by a now defunct company called JHS, not to be confused with JHS Pedals and Josh Scott. There were also a few other copycats like the ESP Pocket Studio and Noble's Sound Studio, which essentially did the same sound. But the one I bought recently, a Rockman X100, I bought it on Reverb for around 300 bucks US. I believe they originally listed around that much and retailed in stores for somewhere between 150 to 200 bucks. I'm not quite sure. If you remember, let me know down in the comments. But this one that I bought was also refurbished with new capacitors, which is very common to do to keep these things running smoothly. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at the Rockman itself. It runs on eight AA batteries. Now they did actually make a, an adapter that you would plug in and you could plug it into an AC outlet. Um, I think it was called the Rock Adapter. On the back there's a little knob uh, for input gain so you can kind of adjust the, uh, the level of your guitar going into the uh, unit so you're not overdriving it. And then if we look at the main control panel, it's kind of laid out in a really weird way. So uh, let's start at the far left. There is a jack, a quarter inch jack for an aux input or a low level out. Okay, so I'm looking at the manual and it says a stereo hi-fi system tape deck radio or another Rockman may be plugged into this input for playing along with recorded music or another musician. So I guess you could daisy chain Rockmans and jam with a buddy. That's kind of interesting. Uh, the next panel is where all your sounds are. Starting with the bottom slider switch, it's a four position slider. You've got uh, distortion, edge, clean one, and clean two. And we'll hear those in a second. 
Um, and then on top, you've got the effects. The middle position is normal, which is the main sound, which is that chorus plus echo sound. And that's kind of the sound that you hear on the Boston stuff and the Def Leppard stuff. And then to the left, you can have the echo off and to the right, you can have chorus off. So there's no setting where you can turn off all the effects. You have to have at least one effect on, apparently. On the second panel, you've got your on off switch. Now, something that I didn't realize is when you turn it on, the LED blinks, it doesn't stay on consistently. And then you've got your volume switches. Now this is a three-way volume switch. There's no rotary dial like you would expect. Um, you've got negative 10 dB, negative 5 dB, and max. So select one of the three and deal with it. And then you've got your input jack for your guitar or keyboard. So I guess they were marketing this to keyboard players as well. And then lastly, you've got two stereo headphones outputs. Now I believe that these came packaged with their own kind of Sony Walkman style headphones. So originally this was marketed as a headphone amp, but clearly lots of musicians and bands found a use for this in the studio. So in order to use this in the studio, you would have to get a cable to go from the headphones jack into your system. Thanks to the magic of Amazon, I sourced this cable. We got a stereo headphone uh, plug on one end and it goes to a left and right uh, quarter inch uh, jacks. So I can plug this right into my uh, audio interface, my UAD Apollo, and get a really nice, hopefully, stereo sound. So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so I got the Rockman plugged right into the front of my Apollo interface. My uh, Fender with the uh, Steve Lukather EMG pickups because, hell, it's the 80s. So let's turn it on. Poof. So right now I'm on the uh, Clean 2 setting. So I don't know why they have it laid out with Distortion Edge, Clean 1 and Clean 2, but we're gonna start at the right side, Clean 2. Normal mode, so I have the chorus and the echo going, and the uh, volume is down to the lowest, which is negative 10 dB. I don't want to overload my system. And here's how it sounds. Wow. That's exceptionally clean. And 80s. Wow. It's amazing how much compression is on that sound. It's like totally slamming, totally studio ready, record ready. It almost sounds like direct guitar with compression and then chorus and reverb. So it doesn't sound like it's going through any kind of uh, amp simulation. Let me try some other licks. Wow. Now I've also heard that some studio guys like Michael Thompson still use this Rockman clean sound to get that really 80s kind of dated sound. Because um, it's instant. It's an instant uh, sound. You don't have to have any extra pedals or uh, rack effect effects. It's just like you plug in, turn it on, and it's instant 80s cleans. <laughs> So I'm just totally going straight into the uh, Apollo. Um, I actually do have a Neve kind of preamp just to lift up the volume a little bit, but there's no EQ on it right now. It's just uh, to gain it up a little bit as it goes into my recording software. So let's try it with the echo off. So that's just chorus.
Now they say echo, and we usually think of echo as being like delay, but echo to me on here is more like a reverb. Like a really short reverb. Here's with the chorus off. That's like pristine clean, like it's almost like too brittly clean. But I'm assuming in the studio you could EQ it after the fact. All right, let's go on to clean one. So if this was clean two, this is clean one. Ah, okay. Now this one actually sounds like it's going through some sort of amp simulation, like a really small amp. It's definitely smaller sounding than Clean 2. I'm going to move the volume up to negative 5 a little bit. But still it has that really nice 80s clean, it's amazing. It still has that really nice compression. So really, this was perfect for the studio because it was already compressed, it already was EQ'd in a way that it sounded great to tape. So it's likely that they didn't do much EQing uh, after the fact. Let's move on to the edge sound, which is the first, uh, I think the lower gain kind of distorted sound. <laughs> It's noisy, it's hissy. Now I'm not sure if that's my Rockman unit in particular, or if that's just the way the distortion sounds, but it's definitely hissy. But it's definitely that sound. Okay, I gotta hear the, the distortion setting, which is supposed to be higher gain. blown away by this thing. This is like instant 80s rock and roll tone machine. I don't care what you say about Marshall stacks and big refrigerator racks. This is it. 
This is like the ultimate to me. And mainly because it just automatically sounds like the record. There's really not much to dial in. It's basically like, here's your clean sounds, here's your dirty sounds, some effects if you want it, that's it. So I did some extra research on this and I found the original manual for the X100 Rockman. The normal setting provides fully produced sound with both stereo, echo, and stereo chorus. The chamber echo produces true stereo reverberation. The stereo chorus is a direct, uh, is a direct reproduction of Tom Schultz's Custom-built doubler, it provides a delayed signal with altered pitch pan predominantly to one side of the stereo outputs. There you go. Okay, so the distortion setting is the high energy overdrive and sustain with multiple stages of preset EQ and filtering. The X100 distortion circuit provides rock steady initial sustain, which makes lead playing easy and fluid. And the edge, which is the lower gain, provides either clean or distorted rhythm sounds by adjusting your guitar volume knob. The signal will remain clean at reasonable, reasonably high volume levels without significant distortion. Turning the guitar volume to full produces moderate distortion sustain and a subtle edge of distortion to lead parts. Interesting. So, according to the manual, the edge setting was meant to use like a real amp where if you're on 10 on your guitar, you had... But you could use your uh, guitar volume knob to clean it up. Now, these are active pickups, so we'll see how this does. Now with regards to the two clean settings, it says two differently equalized settings giving you crystal clean sound with high power sustain. The clean two setting is suitable for a wide range of instruments, including vocal microphones and acoustic pickups. So technically the clean two setting, which I said was kind of like that DI guitar sound with some effects, uh, you could use like your voice into it or uh, acoustic uh, instruments as well. All right, guys, there you have it. That was the sound of my vintage Rockman headphone amp. What did you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Is this the sound of 80s arena rock or what? Also, let me know if any of you guys ever owned one of these and what you thought of it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click that thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, gear demos, or guitar lessons, click the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching. I'm RJ Ron Kilio, and I'll see you in the next video. Huh. A lot of batteries. Perfect timing. I just ran out of batteries.